Hey guys, and welcome back to How to Make Elements from Household Materials, and today's element is going to be yttrium. Yttrium metal is found mixed with some other rare earth elements in the phosphor coating of fluorescent light bulbs, so that is where we will be extracting our yttrium today. This phosphor is composed of a mixture of yttrium and europium oxides, and lanthanum, cerium, and terbium phosphates. When bombarded by ultraviolet rays generated by ionized mercury vapor, this phosphor emits visible light. I found around 150 old fluorescent light bulbs for free on Facebook Marketplace, so I picked them up, broke them open, and scraped the white phosphor powder off the insides, which is now in this jar. As a side note, fluorescent bulbs also contain toxic mercury metal, so this must be done outside and with a proper respirator. We will be processing the other rare earth elements from the phosphor powder in future videos as well. To begin, 101 grams of phosphor powder can be added to a 1 liter beaker, along with 500 milliliters of distilled water. 50 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid can then be added, which I show how to make in a previous video. I could not find data online regarding the yttrium concentration of fluorescent phosphor powder, but assuming that half of the phosphor is yttrium oxide, 50 mils is the stoichiometric amount of sulfuric acid. The sulfuric acid will react with the yttrium and europium oxides to produce soluble yttrium and europium sulfate, but the lanthanum, cerium, and terbium phosphates will remain undissolved. After fully reacting with the acid, the solution was filtered to remove the insoluble phosphates. The filter was rinsed twice with distilled water. The rare earth phosphates were then rinsed off the filter into a beaker and boiled dry to determine how much yttrium dissolved into solution. After boiling dry, the phosphates weighed 86 grams, indicating that there was 15 grams of yttrium and europium oxide present in the phosphor mixture. The acid dissolution step was repeated again, but no more material dissolved, so all of the europium yttrium was removed during the first acid addition. The terbium, cerium, and lanthanum phosphates were set aside for processing in a future project, and the yttrium and europium sulfate solution was boiled down to reduce the volume. At around 50 milliliters, there was appreciable crystallization of yttrium sulfate, so this was quickly filtered off while the solution was still hot, and the yttrium sulfate was rinsed with a few milliliters of boiling distilled water. Online sources suggest that the europium is in a much lower concentration than the yttrium, so the precipitated solid should only be yttrium sulfate, as europium sulfate has a greater solubility in water and is still soluble at 1.9 grams per 100 milliliters in water at 100 degrees Celsius. Interestingly, the solubility of many lanthanide salts decreases at higher temperatures, which is useful in this case. This is also why it is important to perform the filtration hot. After the filtration, the yttrium sulfate was an off-white color, and a yellowish solution of europium sulfate remained. The europium solution was boiled down and set aside to be processed in a future project, and the yttrium sulfate was added to 350 milliliters of cold distilled water to redissolve it. About 10 grams of sodium hydroxide was also added to 100 milliliters of water in a separate beaker, and this solution was added to the yttrium sulfate solution to precipitate yttrium hydroxide. The yttrium hydroxide suspension was then gravity filtered, and then the filter paper containing the yttrium hydroxide was added to a beaker. 300 milliliters of water was added, followed by 60 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid. This causes soluble yttrium chloride to form. The hydrochloric acid can be purchased at hardware stores as muriatic acid. After stirring, the yttrium fully dissolved into solution. Next, we will need to prepare anhydrous yttrium chloride to isolate the yttrium metal. However, boiling down yttrium chloride directly will result in yttrium oxychloride forming during the dehydration. To get around this, 15 grams of ammonium chloride is added to the yttrium chloride which forms a double salt that can be successfully dehydrated and then decomposed at higher temperature to the anhydrous yttrium chloride. After evaporating the solution to dryness, the yttrium ammonium chloride double salt was added to a steel container and fully decomposed on a camping stove. This releases dangerous ammonia and hydrogen chloride vapors, so this must be done outside. After decomposing, the anhydrous yttrium chloride was crushed in a blender and weighed 24 grams. To reduce the yttrium chloride to yttrium metal, 4.3 grams of lithium metal was weighed out, which I showed how to prepare in a previous video. The yttrium chloride and lithium pieces were alternately added to a steel retort, placed in a hollowed out refractory brick, and heated until everything was glowing white. It was held at this temperature for around 30 minutes to ensure that everything reacts. The yttrium chloride melts around 721 degrees Celsius, so as the yttrium chloride melts, it reacts with molten lithium to produce yttrium metal and lithium chloride. After the reaction, the tube was cooled and some anhydrous ethanol was added. The lithium oxide and unreacted lithium metal will react with the ethanol, forming soluble lithium ethoxide, and lithium chloride and unreacted yttrium chloride will also dissolve into the ethanol. Thus, only yttrium metal will remain. 
The contents of the tube were emptied into a beaker of anhydrous ethanol, and it was left stirring while covered to fully dissolve everything except the yttrium. Surprisingly, there were several larger chunks of yttrium metal, which was unexpected due to yttrium's high melting point of 1,526 degrees Celsius. I suspect that by heating it to white hot for so long, the formed yttrium sintered together, forming larger globules. Some of the globules had some unknown brittle material stuck to it, so the beads were hammered to break off the brittle impurities, and then cleaned up a bit with a wire brush. In total, we got 3.1 grams of yttrium metal from my element collection, corresponding to a 26% yield based on the 15 grams of yttrium oxide that dissolved from the fluorescent phosphor. Anyhow, that is essentially how to isolate yttrium metal from fluorescent phosphor. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in a future video. Okay, bye.